tips and tricks. So I want to cover some basic Eclipse tips that will should be useful for people who are new to Eclipse and especially uh, new to Java programming in Eclipse using Eclipse. The first thing I want to note is the help menu here. It's your friend. Uh, if you go under help to tips and tricks, uh, you will get tips and tricks. So you can either click here or here uh, and uh, hit OK. It'll open a browser window and with lists of hundreds of tricks. That's what I got. Learn about a lot of these. So you can do the same. Uh, there's also these uh, this key assist here, which will pop up on this list of all the commands and the keys. So these are all the the commands that I have bound to particular keys, and you can see what those are. Mine are not the standard, you know, because I use uh, I have a different set of key bindings. But the set of commands is the same, of course. Uh, it's just the particular keys that I use might be a little bit different from what you have. And what you want to do is, you know, over time, if you want to, you can customize all of these commands to suit your needs. And what you do with that is you go under Eclipse, Preferences, then here under General and Keys. And here, again, you see all the commands. And then the binding, the binding is the key uh, that will call that command. So an easy way is just you know to search. You type up here, you can search, and then it'll show you the various key commands and the binding. So copy is bound to command C in Mac. Control C it will be in Windows. And uh, here there's the WAN, which is in dialogs and windows. So some of these commands you can uh, bind them to only work in certain windows or in certain cases. Uh, you can't see that. Let me see if I can put that in there. Um, so it says down here, this is when in dialogs and windows. Um, and you can change that. Basically, dialogs and windows means uh, everything, uh, pretty much everything. Um, so in all areas. Sometimes you want only to work on specific areas, like in the tax editor, in the task views, etc. Um, so this is how you do it. So you go here, and then if you click here, and then type a key. Uh, then you know you just you type the key that you want to bind to the copy command, right? And uh, if you want that, if you like that, you hit OK. Otherwise, cancel. Uh, I want to change that right now. So that's how you set your keys. So the main thing is you have to remember the command name. Um, so one uh, easy one that you should be using a lot is you know indentation. So you're typing around. Your program is not well indented, and you want to indent it. There's under source here. There is the uh, correct indentation, which is Command I. So if you type that Command I, it fixes it. Uh, if you have multiple lines, you know what you should be doing is Command A to select the whole buffer. Control A, so that's edit, select all, select the whole buffer, and then Command I indents the whole buffer. So that is a very nice. Short thing, you know, keep your code always indented. So, Control A, Control I, or Command A, Command I, all the time. Uh, content assist. So by far, this is the most useful command. Uh, it's the content assist command, right? So if we go clips preferences, I'm just going to show you here on the keys. Oops, on the keys. The content assist command. Uh, which is a whoops, assist, um, which is you know it can be bound here. I have it bound to Command K or Control Space. Uh, it's very useful, so you want to give it a nice binding. Uh, you know, K is nice because it sits right under my index, on my middle finger, uh, and uh, you know, it's a little bit easier than the space, but depends. So, how do you use Content Assist? Well, like you say here. You have a variable num of people. You know your teacher will tell you that yes, you want to have long variable names because they're very descriptive. But you know they're kind of hard to type. Well, content assist to rescue. What you do is you type n and then content assist that. Uh, so and that pops up this list. You know number of people is right there. The first one hit enter. Boom, you got your variable. Right? 
Uh, let's say you got several of us. You have number of people and number of aliens. Uh, it's a thousand. And then you want to, you can just again type n content assist. And it has both of them. So you can select which one you want, hit enter, and there it is. So that's one way to use content assist. Also, if you're typing an if then statement, you can type if content assist me. And again, it gives you that you want a full ill if with the curly brackets, or you want an if else. Yeah. So, you know, oops. This is a an e nice way to write this. You can say, well, the number of aliens is bigger than the number of people, right? I'm just content assisting all the way. Then I can just, oh, oh no. Um, so you saw that I did that sys out again works the same way. I can type sys out content and then I do the content assist key and boom, I get an expansion. Uh, sys out is actually a template and you can change those on, on Eclipse preferences. And this case you have to go under Java code, Java editor template. Uh, this is where they are. So here you see sys out is right there. So sys out will add this in. I can edit that. I click the edit button. I can change. If I don't like sys out, I can put you know print in there. I can say print. I uh, will generate that. Uh, I can uh, a nice one is uh, you know I can create my own new ones if I like it. I can duplicate the first one, etc. Uh, so those are the uh, editor templates. Uh, I'll get to the con the uh, the common templates in a little bit. So there's this out. There's the if one. There's you know while one. Um, again, just type in the number of the command and put in the con then the content assist letter. So content assist basically works. Um, when you need to add code, right? So put this over here. I have news scanner system in. And uh, it's very similar to this that's happening here, the automatic IntelliSense that happens automatically. Now, the other one is the quick fix. So this happens like in this case. I have a scanner here with a red line. I want to quick fix it. The quick fix, there's a command and it's bound to control one by default, I believe. And if you type that, then you get this little pop up and that tells you, you know, gives you options of how to fix it. In this case, I want to import scanner. That's how I want to fix it. I could also create a scanner class, etc. So I just hit that and uh, it happened. It's up there. So that's the quick fix, uh, which is command one, the man control one by default in Windows. The quick fix is nice because you can, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be wrong. So usually it's for wrong things. But if I go over here on this variable and I type quick fix, uh, it gives me the option. So do you want to rename that variable in the file or in the workspace? Uh, if I choose the file, then now I you know, change that. So now I can change this variable. And you see it's changed over here, right? So this is very useful. And you have a variable that you're using a lot and you want to change its name. I'm going to number of people. So I can do that. I can change it and that's uh, very nice. Right? And so you can you know, try it around, you know, like in this case, I have that new scanner. I probably want to assign that to a variable so I can go down here. Assign statement to a new local variable. Boom, says scanner, scanner. I can change that to keyboard. Uh, and there you go. Right. So command one, that's good. Uh, quick fix. Again, if you forget. What key is, is useful when you're learning. You can go to key assist, look for a quick fix. Uh, P, quick fix is now bound to command one. 
and content assist, I believe, is bound to command K. Um, right there. Uh, so that's content assist uh, and quick fix. Uh, the alt tab is uh, also very nice. You can uh, hit alt tab and go from here to here. Very useful when you have the console. Okay, uh, the local history. Uh, another thing, let's say you're working, you've been working on this file all day, and you worked on it in the morning, you got it to work, sort of, and then in the afternoon you kept working it, and then you messed it all up, and now you wish you had the file that you had in the morning. It happens sometimes, right? Or you wish to see some of the stuff that you had in early this morning because you think that that was the thing. Um, well, Eclipse got you covered. So what you do is you click on the file name here in the Package Explorer, you right-click on it, right click on that and then uh, you can't see this but you have to go all the way to the um what was it the replace with so choose replace with and then local history dot 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 and if you do that it'll pop this up and what you see here is that every time i save this file today it gives me the time and um, so I can click on any one, and I get I have to double click on it, and then it's hard to see in this little screen, but in a big screen, this is better. You can see on here on the left is the workspace file as it is now, and on the right is the the file as it was at six eleven p.m. today, and you can see these things tell you what the differences are, etc. So I could go and replace, if I hit replace, it will bring this one and make that one the current one. Getting rid of this one, although it doesn't get rid of it, it just adds it to the revision history. So it's, you can always go back there. You can go back back to the future. Um, and uh, so there you go. So it's very nice. You know, you don't lose anything. Uh, you can cancel that. I don't want to do that. Um, so that is your local history. Very useful. What else? Uh, the, this is the template, the content this is, the to do. Uh, you see it right here. If you type the word to do in capital letters, I believe it's only capital letters, yes. If you type the word to do in all capitals like that, uh, you're going to get this little check mark here. And you see it also changes the color. That works, you know, in comments. So this is very nice because uh, now you have this check mark here, and uh, you know you can remove that later on once you're done with it. Uh, so it's a nice way of reminding you that you know I have to do this, especially as you work on larger programs. You can leave those around and uh, remind yourself to do stuff. Uh, also, you got this check mark here, but notice also on the right side the blue mark marks. What it to do is on the whole file, right? So you notice how the check mark on the left moves as I scroll, but the stuff on the right does not move. As these marks are, this is the whole file from the beginning to the end. So it doesn't. So I'll put it to do here at the end. Um, whoops. I'll put it there. To do. It will appear here towards the end of the file. Uh, some spaces here. Save that and move that. So you see how that works. So very nice. And this whole, you know, this whole window that you can, uh, you can show a view that is a task list that will show all these things. That's you know when you're working on larger projects. Uh, the, 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 the to do uh, once uh, if you do this business of setting the keys, you know, Eclipse preferences, general keys, general keys, and you set a bunch of these keys, and you want you know you don't want to lose that because now you got all your customized keys. Uh, you want to move that to the machine at work or the machine at home. You can do that. You can just go file. Export preferences is under general preferences. Now you hit, let me move up here. You hit next, and uh, and then you can select, you know, which one you want to export. 
uh, if you select keys preference there, then you can just type in the uh, the file name. Uh, I'm gonna I have this one already there. You can change the file name that you want to export to, and it will save all your key bindings, right? So which key is mapped to which command. Um, that's very nice. And then similarly, you can then after you do that, then you can just file import that file, and it will read it. So you can save that to a file, put that in your Dropbox, and which will get synchronized to all your machines. And then when you're on the other machine, you can import your key preferences over there. What else? Uh, OK, the template for new files. So when you create a new file, say, for example, test. Uh, you see, I just created this file, and here at the top I have this comment that has my name on it, my email, etc. Uh, how do you get it to do that? Well, is you have to go Eclipse, Preferences, uh, Java, and this is the one I showed you before. I got confused. Java, uh, Code Style, Code Templates, right? And then there's the Comments and Files, and that's the one. So that I'm using for the top of the file. So this is the command, the uh, the one that is at the top of the file. This is the one that gets added at the top of a class, or you know, also known as a type. When you add a field or a data member, you know, constructors, when you add a new method, this one gets added. Uh, make sure this is checked. It's not checked by default. You, know, you make sure that automatically add comments for new methods and types is checked. Otherwise, they won't get added. Uh, so, and that's how you do that. You know, you can also have more templates for your code here. Uh, you notice that this one, new Java files, you know, has this stuff here. So, what this is doing is says when I create a new Java file, I'm gonna first insert file comment. This actually refers to file comment. If you forget where it is, you can just hit here, then click. Um, let me just so you can see that click the edit button and then uh, when you go click insert oops. When you click insert variable here it tells you what the various variables are uh, and uh, it describes them so file comment the content of code template comments files um, so that's how you can find out which ones there are. It's kind of hard to find out. So that's comments files. So it's the content of this template. So, so you can modify these, but you can go through here and change this one by hitting the edit button, changing it to be whatever you want. And then we'll get in, as long as you got this check, they will get added. So remember Java code style, code templates, uh java editor templates are the encode template you know it says out stuff and these other templates are the common template and anything else last thing is customized perspective you can customize of course in the set of buttons and the set of menu items that you see in eclipse if you go over here, somewhere here where there's no button, right click, you can customize perspective. And uh, you can choose, this is, you can choose which things appear on the toolbar. Right under this tab, this is the toolbar here, is these buttons. Or you can choose which things appear on your menu. Uh, that's the top row. And uh, you can also choose which set of commands are available. Now, one thing to note is that, you know, if you want, say, a git button uh, or debug buttons uh, in your menu or in your toolbar, you have to set these things, otherwise they're not going to work, right? So, you know, if, if you click it over here in the toolbar visibility and you're still not seeing it, it's probably because you have to click it over here and, and make it visible. And uh, there's also some shortcuts, we're going to do that. So that's it.